Okay, thank you. Uh, welcome to the uh, class. In this uh, session, we have an introduction to the lattice based cryptography. Uh, as you know, uh, the lattice based cryptography is one of the most um, interesting approach of the uh, post quantum. Uh, cryptography, which uh, which will be our next generation of the crypto system, uh, and we'll uh, actually review how it works, how we can uh, create a lattice-based scheme, and how we can actually use it, and what is the hard uh, problem in the uh, this scheme. So, uh, my name is Mochtabo Bishon Yasar. If you have any question during the uh, presentation, you can drop me, ask uh, the question. Uh, you can also uh, send uh, your question after the class to my, if you have actually any uh, question about the lattice, you can ask me my uh, email address mentioned in this slide. Okay, in this presentation, we have an introduction about the different crypto systems including the classical and post-quantum schemes. And then uh, we will review the uh, lattices and how we can create a lattice-based crypto system. Uh, and then, uh, then we have actually a sage code uh, describing how we can, uh, uh, describing an example of the lattice-based crypto. And then we will review the Kyber specification. Kyber is one of the uh, actually a finalists in, uh, based on the, uh, this is actually a finalist post quantum schemes using the lattice based crypto. Then uh, we will review its uh, specification and uh, compare it with other crypto schemes. Okay, so the public key cryptography is one of the most important crypto tools. As you know, uh, when Alice and Bob wants to communicate to each other through uh, uh, an insecure network such as the internet, they have to create a shared secret key. Uh, they use the public key cryptography to create this shared secret key and then using uh, this shared secret key, they can um, communicate with each other uh, by symmetric cryptography primitives such as the AES. Therefore, public key cryptography is the main and uh, the first tool that they need to create this uh, shared secret key. Uh, the uh, current public key crypto systems that we use every day in our application are based on the uh, some uh, problems, some hard problems, including factoring large integers or discrete logarithm. Uh, you, uh, I know that uh, you review these algorithms, these schemes during this class. In the RSA, for example, uh, you know that the hard problem here is uh, factoring large integer. We choose two uh, very large uh, prime integers, prime number, and then we compute the uh, product uh, between them. However, this will this question, this uh, actually problem will be this function will be a one-way function. You, uh, although you can uh, compute the product between, between two large numbers, to, uh, such as the p times q uh, equal to the n, uh, although this uh, way is very, uh, is, can be actually implemented in our uh, current uh, computing system, the inverse of this function will be a hard uh, problem and you cannot uh, factor the n to p and q easily. Uh, therefore, uh, it can be used as a, uh, this hard problem can be used to uh, create, and, uh, create a crypto system and used uh, for different uh, crypto uh, actually uh, applications uh, such as the uh, public key cryptography or digital signature algorithms. In the ECC, also you choose, a, for example, a point on a curve and then uh, have a using a, that uh, base point, uh, you can easily uh, and efficiently, you can compute uh, a point multiplication or a scalar multiplication when you are, uh, when you are given, uh, when uh, the scalar and the base point, uh, base point are given, you can easily uh, and efficiently compute the K times P, uh, while the, uh, when you have the answer, when you have the K times P, you cannot uh, 
find the k uh, while uh, p is given. Therefore, it will be another, uh, this actual problem, I mean, ECC-based crypto is also another uh, crypto uh, systems one-way function, uh, which uh, you, can is, uh, you can efficiently uh, implement uh, this function in one way, and the inverse Mashallah. actually, yes. Mashallah. Are you, uh, which slide you're tapping on? Slide two, introduction. Oh, okay, I thought you went to the next slide, Sani. Go ahead, go ahead. Slide two is okay. So uh, the ECC will be actually, uh, uh, can be used in our crypto system. Uh, okay, so uh, these problems, these uh, algorithms, uh, as you know, and you studied during this course, cannot be broken, cannot be solved in an uh, inverse way uh, using our current crypt, uh, computing system, our current computers. However, Shor's algorithm, uh, shows that these problems can be solved when you have a large scale of the quantum computers. Therefore, if we have a quantum uh, computers, uh, you cannot communicate, you cannot use uh, the RSA and ECC crypto systems because uh, the, the hard problem in these algorithms will be broken, will be solved. Uh, therefore, we have to use uh, another approach, another algorithms, to uh, protect our communication and create and uh, generate a shared secret key uh, somehow that uh, uh, they can uh, they will be actually protected against uh, quantum computers so quantum uh, post quantum cryptography is uh, a type of the crypto system uh, that uh, as we uh, actually mentioned uh, that uh, it will uh, protect our communication against uh, classical and quantum computers. Uh, the uh, interesting thing here is uh, this uh, post-quantum approach, these algorithms uh, can be implemented in uh, limited uh, resource devices, such as the IoT devices. I mean, uh, you can have these uh, um, algorithms implemented on our IoT devices, while even using quantum computers, you cannot broke them. So it will be actually very interesting that uh, you can implement uh, these algorithms with uh, very limited resources, very limited computing uh, actual resources, but you cannot uh, broke them uh, by uh, highly uh, resources, uh, uh, processing units such as the quantum, even quantum computers or classical computers. So uh, different quantum safe approaches uh, were proposed during these years, uh, such as the lattice-based crypto, code-based crypto, and isogeny-based crypto uh, to protect our communication uh, against uh, the quantum computers. This approach, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the NIST competition to uh, choose the best approach of the po uh, post-quantum uh, cryptography uh, has been uh, has start, uh, NIST has started uh, from uh, 2016 uh, by selecting 69 different uh, candidates. During these years, these five years, uh, NIST has several rounds and. Uh, Last round, which is round three, uh, was announced uh, last year by, by uh, selecting uh, four candidates and uh, uh, four uh, finalists and five alternative candidates as a public uh, cryptography, uh, uh, public encryption, uh, key en uh, encryption cryptography or key EM and also three finalists and three alternatives for digital signature algorithms. Uh, as you see, these problems are based on different types of the uh, problems. Uh, however, most of them are based on the lattice-based crypto. They have different uh, specifications uh, from the efficiency point of view, from the performance, from the power consumption, from the security, from the key size. So NIST tried to uh, evaluate them uh, and choose the best one, uh, which can be deployed on uh, different applications in 
high performance application uh, on IoT device application. And uh, I mean, uh, in a variety of the actually uh, target platforms and the applications. Uh, until now, uh, as uh, we see here, uh, four, uh, four, four finalists uh, will be actually, uh, has been selected and one of them will be uh, announced as a uh, winner of this co uh, competition in the next year. Uh, between them, classical uh, McGill is actually code based and has a very huge, uh, actually, uh, very huge uh, uh, secret uh, uh, key size. Uh, some uh, and uh, implementing this pro uh, this algorithm over uh, some uh, resource limited uh, platforms such as the SIM card cannot be uh, actually, uh, this problem cannot be implemented on uh, limited uh, resource uh, platforms. However, for example, Psyche has a very uh, small key size and, uh, uh, and uh, it can be actually, uh, the, the key transformation can be performed very fast. However, it's actually a slow compared to other schemes. Uh, between all these approach and uh, these uh, schemes, Crystal Skyber has uh, the, uh, almost the best uh, performance from the uh, um, latency point of view and also from the efficiency point of view. Uh, it is the best uh, in uh, different uh, platforms uh, and it has more chance to be selected. Uh, while it has uh, a shared framework with the crystals dilithium, which is another finalist uh, in uh, digital signature algorithm. Uh, so uh, in this presentation, we will focus on the crystals Kyber and its specification and architecture, uh, which is a lattice-based post-quantum scheme. The lattice-based uh, crypto uh, a scheme can be used in different applications, such as the encryption schemes. Such uh, we see that these three uh, approaches are uh, a lattice uh, scheme and can be used for uh, creating, uh, for generating a shared circuit key between two uh, two uh, parties, and uh, you can use it for encrypt and uh, encryption decryption the data. It can also be used uh, for uh, building a digital signature algorithms. Uh, uh, so for example, crystals dilithium or uh, Falcon uh, or two lattice based scheme, uh, which can be used in a, a signature application. Also, you can uh, use the lattice based crypto in hash function. And uh, one of the most interesting application of the lattice based uh, Crypto is a fully homomorphic encryption or FHE. In this application, uh, we uh, we use uh, we encrypt our data uh, somehow that uh, the uh, computation over the cloud uh, can be uh, cannot be uh, revealed our uh, data and our information. So uh, suppose that you want to. Uh, use a service on the cloud. In this uh, scenario, you have to send your data to the cloud and uh, your uh, desired uh, computation will be uh, performed on the cloud uh, 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 over your data. Uh, if your data uh, without any encryption will be sent to the cloud, the service provider or the cloud owner can be uh, see your data can be used your data therefore uh, your your privacy uh, has some uh, you don't have privacy or uh, and your data will be uh, revealed uh, therefore uh, some schemes such as the fully uh, homomorphic encryption can be used in this scenario to protect your privacy and your security uh, in this uh, algorithm that as you see here, your data will be encrypted uh, by your public key and your encrypted data will be sent to the cloud. Therefore, uh, um, until now you don't have any issue because your data uh, is encrypted by yourself and 
uh, the encrypted data will be sent to the cloud. After that, your uh, desired computation will be performed on your encrypted data. It's very interesting that, uh, uh, for example, you want to compute uh, the addition between uh, two data. Suppose that uh, your data is uh, two and three, and you want to add, uh, add between two and three, which is equal to the five. So when you encrypt your data, uh, two will be uh, changed to uh, another uh, encrypted uh, value, such as the, for example, five, and three will be encrypted to some uh, another uh, value, such as the seven. And instead of the two plus three, the addition between a five and seven will be computed. And then the encrypted results will be sent to you. Uh, in this uh, approach, as you see, this uh, service provider and cloud provi provider uh, cannot see your data and uh, your data will be secure. Then you use your secret key to decrypt your uh, encrypted results and uh, find your uh, decrypted results at the end, which uh, results in uh, five, uh, which is uh, the addition between two and three. Let me see that. Can you see my screen? I try to show a website. We still see your uh, slides. So if you want to show a website, you have to stop the sharing and then share, an share another screen or something, or, yeah. Okay, I suppose that it will be sure. Okay, we can continue. All right. Okay. So now we want to see uh, what is the lattice. We, uh, until now, we see uh, uh, different crypto system, uh, their applications and how we can use the uh, lattice space in our uh, actually uh, our uh, daily applications, such as the cloud computing. Uh, any questions so far? Okay. So uh, now we want to see um, how we can create a lattice. What is the lattice and what is the hard problem in the lattice space crypto? Lattice is, uh, can be defined as a linear combination of uh, end independent vectors called uh, bases. So uh, suppose that you have uh, N is equal to the two, therefore you have two bases. This is the first uh, basis B1 and B2 is the, your second basis. Uh, the B1 is equal to the four and two, and B2 is equal to the minus three and four. Any linear combination between B1 and B2 results in a point on your lattice. So uh, we can form your lattice uh, by this equation, which is Z1 uh, B1 plus Z2 B2. So uh, can you uh, guess some points on this? lattice, you can need only uh, choose two integer values for Z1 and Z2. And this equation results in different points on your lattice. For example, if you choose Z1 and Z2 equal to, do, equal to zero and zero, the linear combination of this B1 and B2 will be equal to the zero and zero because we have zero times B1 plus zero times P, uh, B2, which is equal to the zero, zero. If Z1 and Z, Z2 is equal to the one and zero, the results will be equal to the B1, which is four and two. If Z1 is equal to the zero and Z2 is equal to the one, the results will be equal to the B2, which is minus three and four. And if Z1 and Z2 is equal to the one and one, the results will be the addition between B1 and B2 because 
the Z1 and Z2 is equal to the one, and we have P1 plus P2. Four plus minus three is equal to the one, and two plus four is equal to the six. You can uh, choose different values for Z1 and Z2 uh, to, to uh, uh, find different uh, points on your lattice. So the lattice L, which is defined our, uh, based on our B1 and B2, uh, this is another forms of the uh, showing your lattice. Uh, this lattice it can be uh, 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 can be shown in this figure. Uh, as you see here, the zero and zero is this point. If Z1 is equal to the one and Z2 is equal to the zero, we have another point, which is uh, four and two. Uh, you see that X here is equal to the four and Y here is equal to the twos. Therefore, uh, four and two is uh, our next point. Uh, this point is uh, achieved when you choose Z1 equal to the zero and Z2 equal to the one and so on. So different points you see here, different points uh, uh, are uh, placed on your lattice and your lattice will be uh, the combination of all these points. So what is the hard problem here? We see that how we can uh, build a lattice. So what is the hard problem? Uh, suppose that the Z1 and Z2 is equal to, uh, the uh, your basis is equal to the five and uh, five and one, and B2 is equal to minus two and eight. The hard problem, one of the hard problem uh, which can be defined over the lattice is CVP or closest vector problem. In this uh, approach, in this uh, problem, we try to find the closest vector, uh, um, closest uh, point on the lattice, uh, which placed uh, we, uh, the closest uh, point on the lattice, which uh, is, which is close to the given point. Uh, these two bases is shown in this figure. You can see that uh, these bases are uh, almost uh, orthogonal. So uh, the degree between them is almost 90 degree. The angle between them is almost 90 degree. This is five and one, and this vector is equal to minus two and eight. So if uh, you are, uh, this point is given uh, 27 and eight, and you are asked to find the nearest point on your lattice to this given point. So uh, the first approach here to find the uh, nearest point is you create this equation, Z1 uh, times five plus Z2 times minus two equal to 27. And uh, the next equation will be Z1 times one plus Z2 times eight equal to the eight, which is uh, these two equation here. So you have two equations with two variables and then you can find the value of Z1 and Z2. Z1 uh, based on these equations will be equal to five times 52 and Z2 is equal to the 0 0.3. Uh, since Z1 and Z2 should be uh, integer, uh, should have integer values, we have to run them. So Z1 and Z2 will be equal to the six and zero. If you uh, place these uh, value of Z1 and Z2 to, the, uh, to your lattice, you see that it results in the point uh, three and uh, 30 and six. This point is the nearest point to this given point. So we can solve this problem when uh, the angle between uh, the bases is around 90 degrees. So you having the orthogonal uh, vectors uh, results in uh, solving this problem. 
in the next uh, lattice, we, uh, we, we have changed the value of B1 and B2 such that as you see, these uh, vectors are almost parallel. So the angle between them uh, will be uh, around zero. In this uh, situation, if the same point is given 27 and eight, and you try to solve to uh, create, uh, to write your equations and solve the, uh, these equations to find the value of Z1 and Z2, you will receive, uh, you will, uh, uh, these results will be achieved for Z1 and Z2. And then we have to round them because uh, as we discussed, they should be uh, integer values. And uh, it results in Z1 equal to minus 53 and Z2 uh, is equal to the 19. If you put these uh, values to your lattice equation, it results in minus four and minus 26. This point, this point is not close and near to uh, the given point. Therefore, in this situation, when the bases of uh, the lattice are almost parallel, you cannot solve the equation. You cannot find the nearest point easily. It gives you an incorrect, uh, an incorrect point. So the CVP or closest vector problem will be a hard problem when you have almost parallel bases in your lattice. In fact, uh, the uh, hardness of the lattice base is based on the shape of the uh, input bases. If the uh, BI uh, vectors are uh, orthogonal, this problem will be easy. If they are almost parallel, this, uh, it will be a bad set of BI. And in the cryptography, we will have a bad set of BIs to have a, a hard problem. For example, these bases will be a hard problem, will be actually an uh, easy problem when uh, the bases or uh, the angle between them are almost 90 degree you can easily find uh, the nearest point of the lattice. While in this, uh, when you change the bases to uh, these bases, it will be a hard problem and it will be a bad basis. Any questions so far? Okay, so CVP is not the only uh, hard problem over the lattice. We can have shortest vector problem or bounded distance decoding problem, uh, uh, which uh, defined over the lattice to create different uh, hard problem, uh, to uh, define different hard problem over the lattice and uh, can be used in different applications. Yeah, today we don't need to uh, go to details of uh, these uh, problems. And then we want to see how the lattice space crypto can be used in our uh, daily applications and we can uh, build a crypto system based on the lattices. So one of the most interesting uh, version of the lattice is learning with errors. LWE or learning with errors is a type of the lattice based crypto system, uh, which can be used for uh, building uh, encryption and decryption uh, algorithms. So suppose that uh, matrix A is a sample from a uniform uh, random values, value uh, 
a uniform distribution. Then uh, you have also uh, have a noise distribution. So in this uh, approach, when you, uh, in this uh, scheme, when you have A and then you have a um, secret key of S and then you compute the multiplication between them, A times S equal to the T. If A and T is, uh, are given, you can easily find the values uh, of S coefficients. You can, as you know, you can uh, compute the, you can compute the inversion of, uh, the inverse of the matrix A, and then computing A inverse times T uh, will, result in, will result in the S. So having A and T, uh, uh, if you have A and T, you can easily find the values of S. If the noise of E will be added to the product of A times S, this problem, uh, this uh, equation, the value of T will be changed slightly uh, somehow that uh, you cannot find the value of S. So it will be a hard problem. For example, we have some values for A and uh, some values, some uh, random values for S. So the vector T can be computed by multiplication between A and S, which is uh, four times six plus one times nine plus 11 times 11 plus 10 uh, times 11 uh, over a finite field of the Q, which is 13 in this example. So it results in the first coefficient and so on. Uh, therefore, you can find the value of 6, 9, 11, and 11 by inversing of, uh, by computing the inverse uh, of uh, matrix A and uh, then computing the uh, A inverse times T. However, if this uh, small noise will be added to the uh, product of A times S, you cannot find the value of S by using these blue uh, values. Different version, uh, version of uh, problems can be defined here, such as the search version or decision version. In the search version, you are asked, uh, you are asked to find the value of S when you have A and T. In the decision version, you have to distinguish between uh, the LW samples from the uniform randoms value. So, uh, we can create a hard problem using the lattice called le learning with errors. So why uh, it will be difficult? Suppose that you have matrix A with N rows and M co uh, columns. And then you have to uh, guess the value of E when a and T are given. Suppose that each coefficient of E has only two uh, trials, zero and one, for example. Therefore, uh, you, um, you have two power of M different trials for guessing the value of E. So finding, uh, solving this equation and finding the uh, these coefficients uh, will be a hard problem when the size of N and M is too large. The best algorithm to solve these uh, equations takes two big O N uh, times. So uh, having a big values for N makes this problem as a hard problem which cannot be so, uh, solved using our current and also uh, post quantum uh, computers, quantum computers, sorry. Okay, so 
we see uh, until now we will re we have reviewed how uh, what is the lattice and how we can define different bases for the lattice. Uh, what is the hard problem over the lattice, and uh, then uh, we uh, reviewed what is the learning with error and uh, how we can create and build a hard problem using the lattice to uh, build a crypto system. The learning with error or LWE uh, again is shown in this slide. As you see in for uh, matrix A, we have N square uh, coefficients. So when uh, the matrix A has uh, N rows and N columns, uh, we have to store all coefficients, which is uh, N square. And also we have, when we want to compute A times S, uh, we have to perform n square multiplication. So the computation, uh, computation complexity of this algorithm, this, uh, this uh, problem is big O n square. Can you tell me why, how we can uh, find the uh, computation complexity in this equation? to compute the multiplication between these two, uh, these matrix and uh, this uh, vector, we have to uh, perform uh, the multiplication between these equations. The first uh, row will be uh, multiplied by this column. So we have to perform N multiplication between these uh, coefficients, A00 with S0, A01 with S1, so on until the end. And then we have N different rows. Therefore, the total uh, complexity will be uh, N square. So in the real world crypto applications, the value of N is a large value, is a large integer. Therefore, the required storage and required uh, complexity uh, is uh, a big number, is a big value. And uh, in some applications, it's not feasible to implement. For example, when you have IoT devices or for example, in uh, SIM card, for example, crypt, uh, when you have to implement a crypto system or a, a, a SIM card platform, uh, for example, uh, you cannot provide these uh, require these requirements, the storage, and also uh, performing uh, n square multiplication for uh, this equation uh, makes your uh, algorithm very slow because your uh, computation uh, capacity is. Uh, is not too much, is not, uh, you don't have uh, high capacity for performing these computations. Therefore, it will be uh, a very slow algorithm. So ring learning with errors or RLWE is another type of the crypto system which tries, uh, which, uh, tries to reduce the required storage and computation complexity of lattice space scheme. In this uh, algorithm and in this approach, we have uh, one column and then the other columns will be uh, generated using uh, the first column. Suppose the first column is A1 until A n minus one. So the second, column will be, uh, can be actually generated by shifting the first column uh, by one uh, to the down, uh, downward. So the A0 will be uh, placed in the second, as a second coefficient, then A1, A2 until the end. And the last uh, coefficient of the first column 
a n minus one will be uh, you actually use it and then uh, place it as a first coefficient when you uh, compute uh, the um, minus a n uh, minus a n mi minus one uh, respect to the your uh, finite field. So you have you in the lattice space you work on the finite field of uh, Q. So uh, you compute uh, this value and place it as a first coefficient. You uh, this uh, scenario will be repeated uh, for each columns to create a new uh, all the actually uh, columns and create your matrix A. Therefore, if you only store the first column, you can easily uh, build and uh, compute the next uh, columns. The storage, uh, the required storage in this uh, scheme, LW, uh, RLWE is only N and the computation will be N log N because in the previous version, all the columns will be, uh, all the uh, column in the general uh, actually uh, approach is independent. So you have to perform an uh, a square multiplication. However, in the ring LWE, uh, these columns are not independent and uh, you can use some uh, function, some approach to decrease the uh, computation complexity. In the lattice space a scheme, we use the entity to reduce the complexity of uh, LWE to n log n. So suppose that n is equal to the 256, using this approach results in uh, uh, saving almost 97% of the computation. Therefore, uh, you have only performed 3% of, 3% uh, of, uh, you have only 3% of the complexity compared to learning, uh, general learning with errors approach. To make the problem more complex uh, to make a more complex problem using the ring uh, LWE, we have another approach called module learning with errors. In this approach, you repeat matrix A k times in row and k times in uh, actually uh, in row and in columns. So you have k square uh, matrix A and you have also K uh, different matrix S and E. Therefore, you, you have K different values of vector T. This is only, uh, uh, you repeat the value of the, I mean, uh, you increase uh, different matrix of A and S to make the problem more complex, uh, actually, um, to make your uh, problem harder, uh, which, uh, which can be used in, uh, which can provide uh, more security compared to uh, ring LWE. Therefore, as you see, since we have K squared different A, the required storage will increase to K squared times N and the computation uh, complexity will be increased to k times uh, k squared times n uh, log n. Based on our uh, discussion, we have a weak, uh, we have a structured lattice. The structured lattice is uh, is actually a variant of the a lattice when you repeat uh, some vectors, uh, some uh, columns in your uh, uh, lattices to reduce the uh, required uh, storage. 
So the LWE and LWR is two main category of, uh, categories of structured lattices. And uh, they can be also categorized to ring LWE, module LWE, and ring LWR and mod LWR. We are reviewed the LWE, which is uh, while the noise comes from the adding uh, the no, uh, adding uh, actually error to a times s, while in the LWR instead of adding a noise instead of adding a, uh, an error, you uh, you can round it. For example, uh, you you uh, run the value of zero, one, two, and three to the zero. So this is a type of the uh, rounding approach here, uh, which can be used uh, instead of the adding the noise. They are very similar to each other and provide the same security, but uh, they have some different, uh, uh, actually, uh, implementations. So uh, the new hope, Kyber, Round 5 and Saber are different lattice-based schemes, uh, which uh, actually uh, were selected in the round two of this uh, competition, while Kyber and Saber uh, are still in the NIST competition as a finalist in the round three. Uh, and uh, as you see, they uh, they can provide more security and they uh, compared to the uh, ring uh, variants of L, uh, the uh, structure lattices. Any questions so far? Uh, I have a question. Oh, sure. So you mentioned it's uh, computationally more expensive or you're just quantifying the number of computations that have to be done, but because it's essentially matrix multiplication, could we leverage CUDA or say AVX instructions in Intel to speed up this computation? Because it, well, we can run in parallel these computations, right? So we wouldn't have a, it wouldn't take long. It'd be a lot of computations, but time-wise it could be done relatively quickly. Yeah. The, the computation complexity is uh, uh, actually, uh, we have two different uh, point of view. The complexity is a independent factor, which is not related, uh, related to how you implement your approach is, uh, depends on your algorithm, it depends on your uh, al uh, security of your application. While uh, you can implement it somehow that you, uh, you, you uh, compute it faster than other algorithm. So although you can uh, have parallel processing, you need to accelerate your computation, but uh, it doesn't mean that you reduce the complexity. Is it clear? For example, here, when we add a uh, k uh, square uh, different of a, we have to perform them. So you have to uh, you have to use more resources to have the same uh, latency. You have the same performance in terms of the time or you when you perform them sequentially you have to compensate it by the time so in both approach when you have more resources to uh, more uh, power uh, i mean processing power or you you, you have to uh, compensate it by more processing uh, power or more time so in both ways it, uh, you have to pay this uh, complexity because you have to uh, perform more multiplication, more uh, uh, operations. Is it clear? Yeah, that's clear. I, I guess the, the final question is, how are they planning on to implement this in the real world? Are they going to use the hardware support for matrix multiplication? Or are they gonna try and uh, do it in a linear fashion? To have a okay, it depends on the 
platform that you that uh, you used for implement uh, these uh, algorithms. If you use a very uh, cheap uh, processing unit, which uh, you have to perform them sequentially because you have only, for example, uh, limited resources to perform these multiplications, to perform these operations. While when you use on a high performance uh, platform, such as, for example, you, use, you, you have application over the cloud computing, you have a lot of resources. So you can uh, perform them very, uh, very fast by uh, utilizing more resources and uh, accelerating these computations. So it depends on your application, it depends on your uh, platforms, uh, and there are uh, different uh, actually uh, implementations in the crypto. Uh, for example, if you, uh, I know that you you are familiar with the ECC and RSA. Uh, it, uh, when you uh, implement them over the IoT devices, you have a different way of implementation. When you implement them over the uh, servers, over the cloud uh, actually services you have to perform them uh, very fast uh, to uh, reduce the uh, uh, latency. So uh, it's complete, completely uh, depends on your application and your platform. Any question? So something quick here. Uh, also notice that LWR uh, is the one that you, uh, for those who are studying fully homomorphic encryption, is a structured lattice based on LWR. So learning with errors. And the other question that Robert asked about the acceleration, Moshtaba is actually, uh, his research is mainly on accelerating lattice on hardware. So we have small devices, medium level devices and high performance uh, devices and uh, implementing lattice still even ECC into these devices is not a good idea to be done in software. So we accelerate even ECC. ECC is small key size, it's very easy math. Remember, you all know that it's only just point multiplication and a couple of uh, other stuff. Uh, still for ECC, we use hardware accelerator. Lattice has a lot more and, uh, and that's uh, basically what we do hardware acceleration for Lattice. In comparison, lattice acceleration in hardware is a lot better than even ECC. So for example, if you go, go like talking about similar cost, cost means like similar hardware. If you accelerate ECC with same cost, probably you will gain something about 10 times faster results in hardware in comparison to software. If you do same cost for lattice, probably you gain, for example, 50 times faster results. So lattice is, is more even hardware friendly. So, and that's why uh, uh, community is studying a lot implementing lattice in hardware for various applications. Yeah, I, I thought it would be quite interesting if you could have yes. offload this to say a GPU and then have a incredibly large key sizes, you know, have a matrix mm -hmm. of 10,000 by 10,000 and it could be done quickly with offloading to a GPU, but then you run into the risk of you know, with a TPM or other secure devices, you have it inside the chip. Now you're offloading it to a PCI device that's separate from where the chip is. So it could open to side channel attacks or various types of side channel attacks. There's a lot of possibilities there, depending on where you choose to calculate your lattice uh, or your matrix multiplications. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, lattice-based crypto is very popular. So that's why I think that's uh, studying, I mean, side channel attacks or even Various hardware. I think less work has been done in GPU side implementing lattices in GPU because lattice is already fast in, I mean, just normal hardware in FPGA or even silicon, I mean, like ASIC implementation. And also, it's also fast in software too. Uh, believe it or not, it's somehow kind of faster than software implementation of ECC as well. So that one thing that makes it very popular is that speed of computation is very fast. The only thing remains the key size, which is you're talking about ECC 
that uh, we talked in the to security level requires key size of being 256 bit and for lattice is something about 8,000 bits. So eight kilobits or something like that. So for a 32 times, almost 20 up to two, 20 to 30 times bigger key size. So that's the problem with lattice families. But other than that, uh, they are good, very implementation friendly. So go ahead, Mashova. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so now we want to see how the LWE can be used for build a encryption scheme and how we can use it to create a whole uh, crypto systems, including the encryption and decryption uh, algorithm. Uh, in this uh, slide, as you see, uh, we have uh, two operations, key generation and encryption. Alice and Bob want to uh, communicate to each other. Therefore, they have to uh, create uh, and generate a shared secret key between them. At the first uh, stage, Alice uh, will compute A times S plus E. Uh, as you know, uh, and as we discussed, it will be a hard problem and having A and T, you cannot uh, find the value of S, the value of coefficients of S. A will be a random value and S and E uh, will have a, a small coefficients uh, in our uh, real world uh, crypto system, the, the value will be only minus one, zero, and one. So uh, the A and T will be uh, the public key of the Alice. So uh, she uh, published, uh, she uh, will publish her uh, public key A and T uh, to uh, other parties. And the S will be her own secret key and uh, will be stored in uh, only, uh, it's actually known for Alice. On the other side, Bob will ask for uh, Alice public key, uh, which is A and T. And when he uh, gets the value of A and T, he uh, computes uh, the R times A T. R will be a random value with a small coefficients similar to the S. Then uh, he, add, uh, he adds the value of uh, the noise of E1 and E2 to the product of R times R and R times T. Then uh, he will add the message M to R times T plus E2 to generate, uh, to generate the cyber text of U and V. So as you see, the U will be R times A plus E1, and V will be R times T plus E2 plus M. The message M will be our secret, uh, will be our uh, shared secret key. So they, uh, in this scenario, Bob's, uh, Bob uh, wants to send the message M to Alice and then using the same message M, they can generate a shared secret key and use it uh, to communicate with each other uh, through symmetric crypto system, uh, crypto primitives such as the AES. So again, if we uh, rearrange the computation, we, we can see that the V is equal to R times T plus E2 plus uh, e, uh, M. So the T, as we know, is equal to A times S plus E, which is uh, computed by Alice. We have only the value of T. The value of S is not, uh, 
known for us. But we know that R times T is equal to the R times S times S plus E. So we can again uh, sum, uh, summarize the equation to R times A times S plus a random uh, a noise value here plus message M. This yellow value has a very small uh, values because E and uh, because E, uh, uh, the coefficients of E is sampled from uh, a small coefficients as we see it will be only uh, its co uh, coefficients uh, are only can be only minus one, zero, and one. Therefore, we can assume that uh, the multiplication between a value with a small uh, coefficients will result in small coefficients. And then when we add it to another small coefficients, we have only a small noise here. So we show it only with this yellow box here. The value of u also can be uh, uh, can be rewrite as a r times a plus e1. So if we compute the u times s, it will be equal to r times a times s plus we have a small values here between e1 uh, multiplication between e1 and s it will be a small. Uh, noise here. So you can see that this value is almost equal to the V minus M. You see here V is equal to R times S, uh, excuse me, R times A times S plus M plus noise. So V minus M will be almost equal to U times S. If we uh, ignore the noise value, they will be uh, completely equal. Since we have a noise, uh, a small noise here, they will be almost equal. So if Alice used the cybertext of U and V and then computes the V minus U times S, and we know that S is her own secret key. She can compute, uh, she can decrypt the cyber text and reveal the message M. So it, it is equal to M plus a noise. And then uh, we can run the message, uh, the uh, results to find the value of the message M because it will have only a small coefficient. So these algorithms, these approaches can be used to send the message M from Bob to Alice, and then they have the same uh, message and they can uh, generate the shared secret key and communicate with each other. Is it clear? Any question? Okay. So if we consider the uh, A has uh, N by, uh, has a dimension of N by N, S uh, has K uh, uh, vectors, uh, the T also have, uh, the T also has uh, K uh, actually columns. So Bob's, uh, random value will has K uh, rows. And uh, therefore the cyber text have this, uh, the size of the cyber text will be K times N plus K. As you see here for encrypting only one bit of the uh, K bit of message M, we have to send a large size of the key uh, as a public key, which is n square plus n uh, times k as a public key of Alice. And also the cyber text will, uh, uh, is equal to the size of cyber text is k times n plus k. 
So uh, with the source, uh, with the large value of n, uh, the size of the key here in the lattice space is uh, actually uh, too large. Okay, now we want to uh, review an uh, example, an example uh, to see uh, how it works if we consider n is equal to the four as a, an example only, k is equal to the one and q is equal to the 13. So at the first step as we uh, see Alice should uh, compute the chi generation operation. The chi generation uh, needs to choose the uh, choose a random value for a. So as you see here, we have a, a matrix of four by four as a uh, a for Alice. Then she computes, uh, she uh, selects uh, the random value for S uh, with a small coefficients, which is minus one, zero, and one. So it, uh, it will be uh, a vector of four by one, because N is equal to the four and K is equal to the one. And uh, she also uh, needs to choose a random value for E with the same uh, dimension. And then uh, she, uh, have, she has to compute A times S uh, over uh, the finite field of the Q, and, uh, which is equal to the T, and then uh, add uh, the error to the results. So, the matrix A and the vector T will be her public key, while the S is the secret key of Alice. In the next step, Bob uh, asked for uh, her public key and uh, also choose the random value for R as a uh, random uh, with a small coefficients and also uh, as, uh, choose a noise for E1 and E2. And then he also uh, chooses the message M bit, uh, which has only one bit equal to zero or one. Then uh, he computes the R times A uh, and then the results, the product will be at uh, will be added to E1 to uh, create the to generate uh, cyber types of U. And for V, we have the same scenario R times T, and then add the value of E2, and then the message M. The message M has only uh, can be only zero or one. While we uh, uh, converted it to uh, Q divided by two. So if uh, the uh, M is equal to the zero, uh, this product will be equal to the zero. While uh, the M is equal to the one, it will be Q divided by two. So for the Q equal to the 13, it will be seven. So we have, so uh, Bob uh, computes them cybertex of the V. At the end, having the cybertex of U and uh, V, Alice can compute the U times S, and then uh, she can uh, subtract uh, the product. Uh, uh, she can compute the V minus U times S. So she can uh, compute the, uh, these uh, results. And as you see here, the results here is two while the message here is zero. The difference between the message and these uh, 
answer here uh, is uh, the difference between uh, is actually uh, created because of the noise. Because as we uh, see in, uh, as we discussed in, during the computation, we have a small noise uh, which can be uh, ignored by rounding. So after that, if we have the, uh, the value of the F2, which is V minus uh, U times S is greater, greater than Q, uh, Q divided by four, or, uh, and also less than uh, uh, three times uh, Q divided by four, uh, it means that it is equal to the one, and if it's uh, the value of Q is close to zero, it will be equal to the zero. And then we will compare between the uh, rounded value here and the message, and we see that they are uh, equal. So uh, this, uh, using this approach, we can create, uh, we can actually uh, share the message and send the message M from Bob to Alice, and then they have the same message and can communicate with each other using this shared secret key. Okay, before uh, I have actually a Sage code and uh, I'm also actually, I'm already uh, upload a um, Sage code, uh, a Python code uh, for this uh, example to Canvas, you can use it uh, after, the last slide, I uh, I will change my screen to uh, work on different example uh, using this uh, code. Okay, so for the Kyber, as uh, we can see here, uh, we have different types of the Kyber called Kyber 512, Kyber 768, and Kyber uh, 1024, which can be used for different, uh, which can uh, provide different security levels based on the NIST uh, definition. So uh, in these uh, algorithms, we have exactly the same uh, computation, which we reviewed for a small value of N and uh, K and Q. While in the Kyber, the N is equal to 256. K is equal to two for the first secret level. And if we increase the number of uh, the value of the K, we can pr uh, provide more security. You, you actually, uh, you know that here, by increasing A, you repeat the matrix A you have different variants of uh, matrix A and you have to perform more computations. Uh, therefore, it can provide more security. So here, for going to this um, actually higher security, you have to increase the value of K. And also all coefficients in the Kyber algorithms, uh, will be performed over uh, this prime value, which is uh, 3329. So you can see the size of the secret key, public key and cyber text in uh, different Kyber uh, algorithms. You remember that ECC approach has, uh, ECC algorithm have a small key size while here, the smaller, uh, smallest Kyber algorithm needs uh, 1,632 bytes as a secret key, 800 bytes as a public key, and 768 bytes as a public key. So it is a huge uh, key size. It's actually too large key size compared to uh, our current uh, ECC-based crypto system, uh, and even compared to 
uh, some uh, post quantum approach such as the psych, while compared to uh, code based crypto is still uh, too small. So in some applications that uh, the, you have to uh, transmit the public key several times uh, and uh, you have a limited bandwidth to uh, send and receive the uh, actually packages. The size of uh, these uh, actually uh, key size will be an issue and uh, it uh, makes your crypto system uh, is uh, uh, actually uh, slow. You can see that by increasing the value of K, the size of public key, secret key, and cyber text will also increase. And uh, you have a uh, bigger key size, larger key size for higher security level. So on the other hand, although the uh, lattice-based crypto has a uh, larger key size compared to ECC-based uh, algorithm, we can see that uh, the post-quantum approach from the performance uh, point of view, uh, they can be implemented uh faster and even uh more efficient compared to even pre-quantum approach so you see that here the curve to 5119 which is one of the uh, uh more efficient and uh interesting ecc based approach uh has uh needs actually uh uh Six, uh, 60,000 clock cycles to compute the key generation, while the post quantum approach of Kyber uh, needs uh, uh, actually uh, fewer cycles, almost uh, you can see 60% uh, uh, of the uh, total latent required latency for the curve to 5119 to perform uh, a to perform a post quantum crypto algorithms compared to the RSA the lattice space has a uh, very interesting actually uh, results it's more efficient so it's very interesting that you have uh, a higher security level of uh, crypto system by even lower required uh, computation so uh, then other things here, as you see, is this, uh, the size of secret key, public key, and cyber text. And uh, as you can see here, the lattice space, uh, this is the main uh, problem, main uh, issue in the lattice space, which, have, uh, which has actually a larger key size. Any question? Okay, let me share my browser. Online students, do you have any questions or something? Do you have something to ask? So, I'll keep hold to. Okay. No Can you see my screen now? The, my browser? Yes, yes, my store we see that. Okay. This is some uh, sample example for uh, different uh, topics we discussed during this uh, presentation. The homomorphic uh, encryption uh, is one of uh, the interesting uh, topics. So here, suppose that uh, we want to send the value of Alice, the age of the uh, Alice and Bob to the cloud and perform a subtraction between these two data. 
and then uh, see if uh, Bob is older than Alice or not. So we have uh, two values, uh, four different values for uh, um, describing their ages. Uh, zero, zero means that they have zero, uh, less than 10 years. Uh, zero one means that they have 10 to 12, 20 years. Uh, one zero means that uh, they have um, 20 to 30 years. And uh, one and uh, one and one means that uh, he or she has over 30 years. So you see that, for example, here, A1 and A0 is equal to the zeros and zero. And uh, B1 and uh, B0 is equal to the one and zero. Instead of uh, sending these equations to this uh, data to cloud, you can uh, convert them to a uh, cyber text. This is some values in, which can describe our uh, data. So after that, the uh, operations will be performed over these encrypted data instead of our, uh, our real uh, data. And then the results will be this value. These results will be uh, sent back to our uh, system. And then we can uh, decrypt it. it we can uh, decrypt the results to uh, our uh, desired results, which is one, which means that Bob is older than Alice. We can change the value of uh, these of, um, data. And uh, as you see in each uh, iterations, we can have different values even by constant uh, inputs because some random values uh, will change our data and change our encrypted data. And the service provider over the cloud and also the cloud owner cannot be, cannot aware of our real data and our uh, concept of our uh, information. So uh, it can uh, pro protect your uh, data over some uh, cloud computing services. The another interesting thing, uh, here is different lattices. You can uh, uh, define different bases over uh, this website and see uh, different points over your lattice. For example, the simple lattice is when you have one zero as a first base and uh, basis and uh, one zero and zero one as a B1 and B2. You see uh, uh, these points uh, are placed on your lattice, one and one, one and two, one and three, and so on. And here is uh, these actually points shows, uh, show the, uh, your lattices. You can change it and see different uh, lattices with different bases. So, yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, you can try different bases here and see different lattices. Here, the base one is 53 and minus 19, and base two is equal to 25 and six. The last uh, excuse me. Now I'm actually trying to show uh, the example that we discussed. Uh, you have access to this uh, example through the canvas. Uh, here, 
we have uh, these uh, functions, the modular multiplication between two matrices, uh, the modular add between two matrix and also the modular subtraction. Uh, then we can define our parameters, uh, including the N, K, and Q. We can have different uh, values for Q, uh, which uh, results in a larger coefficients in your uh, crypto system. And then, okay, let me change it to bigger values, for example. Then the Alice has uh, the Alice actually uh, selects uh, the matrix A uh, with n square coefficients between zero to q minus one. Then she computes, uh, uh, she also selects uh, the matrix S with a small coefficients of uh, minus one, zero, and one. She also uh, select, uh, selects the noise of E with a small coefficients and then computes the she computes the A times S plus E, which results in uh, T. So uh, the matrix A and T, vector T, should be uh, sent to the Bob as her own public key, while S uh, will, will be her own secret key. On the other side, Bob uh, chooses the matrix uh, vector R as a random number with a small coefficients and noise of E1 and E2, and also the message M be uh, one, uh, between uh, zero and one, and then computes U by multiplication between R times A, and then adding the E1 to the results, to the product. So, the U is uh, this vector. Then he again uh, computes R times T plus E2 plus message M. The message M, as we discussed, uh, will be converted to, uh, the zero will be converted to zero, while the one will be converted to Q plus one divided by two. Why, when the Q here in our computation is 3329, the message M, if message M is equal to the one, it will be converted to uh, 1665. So he computes the uh, cybertext of V and then Alice can decrypt the message M uh, by computing V minus U times S. So this value will be, uh, should be actually rounded to zero or uh, one if the value is near to uh, 1665, it will be rounded to one, uh, one. If it's uh, near to the zero or 3328, which is the end of our finite field, the next uh, uh, integer will be zero again, uh, it will, uh, around it to the zero. So here, uh, the value is rounded to the zero. And as you see here, the message, sorry. Okay, the message M is also is equal to zero. Therefore, they have the same message value. So the results will be true. You can run it for different values and see different, uh, actually uh, different uh, randoms value to see how the lattice space crypto works. You can increase the uh, size of the N uh, or decrease it to uh, see how the real world crypto system uh, can be implemented in the, uh, our daily applications. Any question?
Do you have any questions, guys? Okay. If you have any question, you have uh, my email address. You can send me your question about the code, about the presentation, about the uh, lattice applications, and I try actually to uh, answer you uh, as much as I can. Thank you. Oshdeva, thank you very much for the presentation. So uh, I think here we basically uh, 